Doba stage. Hi, I want to welcome you to the global stage, unveiling the truth, bringing you God's perspective. My name is Ray and we are discussing the concept of marriage, how to have and enjoy a successful marriage the God way. In our previous episodes, we decoded the true meaning and the true purpose of marriage. And in today's episode, we will look at the true structure of marriage. And don't forget to bring in your contributions, your experiences, lessons under the comment section of this video. And kindly share this video with all your loved ones and family. Thank you. Again, the word of God is the final supreme authority, meaning that every thought, desire and opinions must submit to the authority of the word of God. And having decoded for you the true meaning of marriage, I believe by now you have an idea of the true structure of marriage. And the purpose of telling you about the true structure is for us to understand how it works so we can deal wisely with the affairs at home and then in life as a couple. And remember we define true marriage as the union between three persons, namely Christ, the husband and the wife. And the structure of marriage is seen in 1 Corinthians chapter 11 verse 3. It says, But I would have you know that the head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. So in marriage, in terms of hierarchy and authority, Christ is the head of the man. The man is the head of the woman, and ultimately Christ is also the head of the woman. Therefore God, which is Christ, is the head of the marriage and not the man. The supreme authority is Christ. And you can see this same principle in the book of Ephesians chapter 5. Now that begins to tell us something. The head of a woman is not every man. God is not saying that, but that men are the heads of women or men have authority over women. God is dealing with that man or that woman in the marriage. Therefore, the only people who have authority over women are number one, their fathers and their husbands. Outside these two persons, no man has authority over a woman. If the woman is not married, it is the father. If the woman is married, it is the husband. Very important point and no other man. So when it comes to taking instruction, the man must take instruction from Christ and the woman must take instruction from the man, that is the husband. Like Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. Which means that as a woman, you have to marry a man who has a head. If you marry a man without a head, you are in big trouble. And I've seen too many women marry men who don't have any heads over them. And their marriages and lives are in shambles. Many of the husbands think that they are the heads of the family. And therefore, they don't answer to anyone. No one tells them what to do. And that is a lie. Christ is the head of the family, of the marriage and not the man. And that account for the foolishness of some, some of these husbands in playing around, especially being not responsible and playing around with other women. Because if he doesn't recognize anyone over him or above him, that man called a husband, in truth, is not a husband. Take it from me. Because to be called a husband, there must be one who is head over you or has authority over you. To be called a wife, you must have a head over you and that is your husband. If you don't recognize, listen and submit to the authority of your head, you are not a husband, you are not a wife, you are just a man or any other woman. Very important point. Christ is the head of the marriage and not the man. Hello? Are you following? Alright, so just look around. Those who you know that don't recognize Christ as their head, especially the husbands, observe their speeches behaviors and actions very terrible and listen if you're a woman and you marry a man who has no head you are not under compulsion to obey him it becomes a choice now please i am not saying that don't obey him i'm not advocating for disrespect or disobedience towards the man you are married to i am saying that it becomes a choice for you to obey or not to obey because christ is not his head he does not have a head. 
is either he's his own head or there's another head which is not Christ. But if you marry a man who has a head which is Christ, you are under compulsion to obey him and take instruction for him. In love, of course, and love only exists and can be expressed one has, when one has a choice or the free will. So you obey not really because you must, but because you love him. That is why you obey your husband. And thank your God if you have a husband who recognizes Christ as his head. If you are not married yet, don't accept that man who does not recognize Christ, the word of God, the church, and your pastor and make foolish remarks concerning Christ and the church. That is making mockery of Christianity in words, in attitudes, and in actions. And God is talking to somebody right now. Don't marry such a person who doesn't recognize Christ as his head. If you marry such a person or such a man, you are in big trouble. So the head of the man, that is your husband, number one is the word of God, which is the Bible. Number two, your pastor. Number three, your church. This three represents Christ because God is not visible to the optical eyes. And therefore, he, the vital person, operates with and through these three entities. And these three entities are in sync with each other. That is, your pastor, the church, and the word of God, which is the Bible. Question, you may ask, why is the man the head of the woman and not the opposite? Have you ever wondered? Well, God provides an answer for that. And let's look at that in 1 Corinthians 11, verse 7 to 9. It says, from 7 to 9, it says, For a man indeed ought not to cover his head, for as much as he is the image and glory of God, but the woman is the glory of the man. Did you see that? It says, the woman is the glory of the man. Wonderful. I'll describe this particular verse in our next uh, episode. Now, let's go to verse 10. It says, For this cause ought not... For this cause ought the woman to have power on her, on her head because of the angels. Nevertheless, neither is the man without the woman, neither is the woman without the man in the Lord. Then in verse 9, it says, sorry, in verse 8, it says, For the man is not of the woman, but the woman of the man. And in, in verse 9, it says, Neither was the man created for the woman, but the woman for the man. This is why the man is the head. Let's go to 1 Timothy chapter 2, 2 verse 13. It puts the icing on the cake. 1 Timothy chapter 2 verse 13. It says, let me read from verse 11. It says, let the woman learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach, nor usurp authority over the man, but to be in silence. For Adam was first formed, then Eve. This is the reason. It says, for Adam was first formed before Eve. This is the reason why man is the head of the woman. Because man came first. Period. That is it. This is why the man is the head of the woman and not the opposite. And that in marriage is about the man and his vision. And when we get to talking about the loving your husband and submitting to you, loving your wife and submitting to your husband, we will go into more detail about these things. Therefore, in dealing with authority, Christ, who is the ultimate head of the union, transcends information or instruction to both the husband and the wife, and in return, both of them submit to the, to the instruction of Christ. That is, the word of God, the pastor, and the church. This is the true structure of marriage seen with the triangular diagram I'm showing just now. Therefore, in true structure of marriage, democracy, is and should not rule marriage, but rather love which is expressed in Christ. Now many are ruling their marriage with democracy, and that accounts for the issues we have in a lot of marriages, especially with the women. Now what I just said is very big, it holds a lot of water. In true marriage, democracy should not be the principle. The principle should be, should be love in Christ. Alright, so this is where we end our discussion on the true structure of marriage. Meditate on this truth and walk in the light of them. In our next episode, we will look at preparing for marriage. And I'm going to be sharing certain truths you have never heard in your life before. Watch out for that. Hey, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today and forever. God bless you.